Hello and welcome! It is modern week time on the Standard Super League. I'm joined by Luis Scott Vargas and Josh Utter Layton. Welcome, Josh. Hey, thanks for having me. Oh yeah, I I would not surprised when I saw the modern list come in from you. It's almost like Christmas morning. I've got this thing set up. <laughs> like my email will just ding eight times over the course of Monday. It's awesome. Getting your list was a particular pleasure, I must say. Yeah, Please. I'm a really I'm a, I'm a really big fan of the stack. It's a lot of fun. So explain to the crowd what the hell you're playing this week. Okay, uh, so the plan A is to be a Jeskai Sensei combo deck. So it's uh, uh, all like one mana cantrips and Jeskai Sensei, and the only creature is Fate Stitcher. Well, there's also Spirit Guides, but those you're hopefully not casting. Uh, so the idea is that you get an Ascendancy in play, loot away your Fate Stitcher, bring it back, and then you just start chaining all your one mana cantrips, uh, gr looting every time to keep the chain, you know, fueled. Grow your fate stitcher, and eventually you start hitting like other fate stitchers, and then can get multiple going and start making all the mana you need, and uh, eventually kill your opponent with giant fate stitchers. Okay, so this uh, so, plan A so, part. This is the Jeskai Ascendancy combo deck normally works with a mana creature, but you're using fate stitchers as the mana creature, so it essentially is the combo thing that makes mana and taps every time through the loop, but yep. Unlike a mana creature, it essentially comes out with haste when you cast it by unearthing it for a blip. Yeah, Fate Stitcher and then it gets is just the best blip. mana Yep, uh, Fate Stitcher is the best mana creature essentially because it's, uh, it, it just has haste and uh, that makes you know, it so much better. It's, it's basically immune to Bolt because you can unearth it and then start going off at instant speed in response to a Bolt to grow it out of Bolt <laughs> And it also draws you a card because you get to discard it in lieu of another card to Jeskai Ascendancy. Right. Or Faithless Looting or what have you. Okay, so I've seen that before. Like, I've seen Ascendancy with Fate Stitcher. I know that that got some play at Worlds this last year. Tell me about Plan B. <laughs> so Plan B is Pyromancer Ascension. And sure it is. Basically, you're playing all of these one-mana cantrips to go with your Ascendancy anyway, and those are exactly what your Ascension wants also. Um so without uh, dig through time, it's a lot harder to reliably have your ascendancy without going out of your way to try to tour it up, which ends up being a little slow, I think. So this deck ends up being a little bit faster than trying to spend like a three minute spell to tutor for the ascendancy because you have the ascension, which you can just play if you draw that instead of the ascendancy. Uh, so the ascension is definitely plan B. I think it is not as powerful as ascendancy. Uh, just it takes a, it's a little bit harder to get going. Uh, like you can have an ascension and still not be able to turn it on. But basically, once you get an Ascension and activate it with two counters on it, then you're able to uh, chain through your deck incredibly easily. Just with all the cantrips, you're just always finding another draw spell when you get to copy them each time. And then you have the Simeon Spirit Guides, and the key card with uh, Ascension is Manamorphos to start generating mana. Got so it. when you cast a Manamorphos, you end up getting plus two mana ahead which you can then use to cast your draw spells to start digging for the next Manamorphose. Or once you have everything assembled, you use a Manamorphose to cast the Jeskai Ascendancy and a spell to get a Fate Stitcher in the graveyard. Okay, so even if you're going off with Ascension, it's not like there's a Storm Kill in the deck. You basically still have to play an Ascendancy <laughs> to create a giant Fate Stitcher? Yeah, the kill with Ascension is still going through Ascendancy. You still have to eventually get Ascendancy in play and then make a giant Fate Stitcher. So this deck can't actually beat a moat. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> at least in the main deck. Once you have the lightning bolts, things get a lot easier. Yeah. Love you it. Also, you also have a nice little sideboard card in Concentrate. That's not a card you see that often, but uh, I remember Ben Stark running around trying to find them before <laughs> the Modern Pro Tour for Escape Shift sideboard. And it, yeah, I yeah. assume it's like the similar thing here. Yeah, it's definitely Ben Stark technology against like the Jun slash Junk decks. Uh, the, those are just trying to like one for one you into Oblivion and grind you out. So. All you want is just like raw cards against them, and that's the best way to do it without uh, Trish Cruz being legal. Yeah, basically because Dig and Cruz aren't legal, you had to resort to the to the uh, Pyromancer engine as a way to just draw extra cards. You don't have a great way to draw extra cards other than that. Yeah, it's it's more that you want to build the deck to be more aggressive, whereas before you got to build like a really good control deck because you could you know play a long game and just draw a lot of cards and beat your opponent that way. So now the deck is just much more aggressive. Like, it's just focused on killing the opponent really quickly rather than trying to interact at all. Like, I even cut the lightning bolts from the deck just because I don't... Like, I want to just ignore what my opponent's doing and just try to do my, my deck's thing as, as well as possible. 
I, I will say, I like the visions of Beyond as the cantrip that sometimes is just Ancestral Recall. Yeah, uh, basically all the deck wants is just one mana can instant speed cantrips. Like that, That's the effect you're looking for. And Visions has like a huge upside compared to other options like Peak or uh, things like that. Because, yeah, sometimes, you know, you can get going with uh, an Ascendancy and, and just need more gas. And Visions will, like, once you go off a little bit with Ascendancy, you can actually turn on Visions. And then once you hit uh, Visions drawing three cards, you're, you're just off. Um, like, that really seals the deal there. And sometimes just if you play a long, grindy game against uh, a deck like John or Junk and Visions, it just happens to, like, turn on natural. <laughs> then it's insane. It, it is unfortunate that... Uh, visions can't save you if you never were able to go off, but it is good if you stall. Right. Yeah, it's not very good at setting up like your combo. It's it's just a one mana cantrip there, but that's there's not like preordain or ponder legal that you can be playing right. instead. So you're not you're not giving up a whole lot playing that over the other options. I mean, you're already playing cantrips like Nivius Wisps, right? It's not like the bar for a cantrip is super high in this deck. <laughs> yeah, but Nivius Wisps, uh, Wisps has a lot of upside too. It just it, it gains, gains you two or three life. life. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes more. Sometimes there. you can tap their uh, Splinter Twin target in response to the twin. You know, I had to look up which Wisps it was to see if it was uh, the red one, so you could give your Simian Spirit Guides haste. <laughs> <laughs> that's not super useful. <laughs> no, that's that. That seems like a bit of a stretch. What what matchup do you want to see the least with this deck? I think Abrupt Decay Thoughtseize is what you do not want to face. So basically, you know, Jun decks. Do you have a sense of how fast this Goldfish is compared to something like Splinter Twin or Tron or Amulet or Infect, whatever? The decks where you're not, they're not interacting a ton, ton and you're not interacting a ton. This is basically a turn four deck. Uh, it can turn three kill, but most of the time you're looking at a turn four kill, which is kind of the baseline for the format. So you're, you're going to be behind against things like Infect that are actually turn three decks. Uh, but it's it's on pace for you know the Splinter Twin or Tron goldfishes. Now it's capable of turn three pretty easily with Spirit Guides, right? Is that where it peaks? It can turn two. <laughs> I was gonna say, can it? Actually... It is possible to turn two. How do you? Yeah. Turn what do you... If, if you have like turn one Faithless Looting, discard Fate Stitcher, then turn two you can unearth Fate Stitcher, Spirit Guide out Ascendancy, and go off from there with a with a Detexian probe. You could even use probe to like discard it. Like you can play turn to ascendancy, probe to discard fate stitcher, and then you, you have to serum. No, uh, you, you have semi to have spirit guide, semi spirit guide, mana <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, but re th turn three kills are. Turn three is actually like realistic. Mind. Like that's a thing that happens. Yeah. Now, is the deck you know cool brew that this is an opportunity to just try out, or is this? you know, a legitimately real deck that people could be thinking about taking to their modern tournaments. I think this is legitimately a real deck. I actually played a very similar deck at a Grand Prix, back when Treasure Cruise was legal, granted. Uh, but I played, like, Ascension and Ascendancy there. And, yeah, I think as long as, like, Thoughtseize Decay decks are not super popular, this is a pretty good, good deck. Like, it, it goldfishes uh, at the same speed as pretty much everything else. And if people, it's, it's a different angle to be attacking from. So I think it's definitely a good option. And if we ever change the rules to say who draws more cards wins, then you're you're a favorite against basically everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that I mean that is how the game should work, right? As far as I know, that's the rules of magic. That's oh. what, how I make my decisions. But <laughs> you definitely get your money's worth out of a deck like this. <laughs> what 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 did you predict Paul would be on? I know you, I know you joked about main deck rending volleys, presumably because he would be splinter twin. <laughs> but I, I'm curious what what if you have a sense of uh, what what he might play. He's gonna be playing islands of some kind. <laughs> if only you knew, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you going to? Do you have specific plans for this weekend in Vegas? Looking forward to playing, presumably. Uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to playing. I can't wait to actually like get to play in a tournament with uh, the Modern Masters cards. Uh, I've done a little bit of practice for it, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. it seems really awesome. Always, always love playing in the bounty events too. Uh, so those are both Thursday and Friday, and pretty excited about those also. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. There's two. There's one both Thursday and Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, the, the only question for me is whether I give away the max or like one one less than the max because <laughs> I, I tend not to hold on to my prizes very well when I play in those. <laughs> 
And the count is what, 7,500 right now for, for Vegas this weekend? Yeah, last time I checked something, it was something like that. Uh, it's possible that we get another 500 to 1,000 in the last day or two, but I think people are getting better about re pre regging It's still obviously just a ton of people. It's still the biggest oh, yeah. tournament of all time by almost as much as the the, the previous tournament was. Like, it's, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's pretty it's pretty insane. I think this weekend is going to be just like a, a true spectacle. And you're also seeing, you know, 4,000 people in Chiba. I don't know what U Utrecht is up to, but it, they have definitely a couple thousand. So... We've, we've got a lot, there's going to be a lot of people cracking Modern Masters packs, or I guess ripping open, or tearing open Modern Masters packs this weekend. I'm but. not ex excited about the booster wrapping, I have to, I do have to say that. It just feels so wrong to like... It, it's different, I don't know, there's something... To bust open. It, it yeah. sounded different when Marshall did the cracker pack yesterday on limited resources. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, it sounds like you're, you're like unzipping a jacket instead of uh, <laughs> opening a pack, but I do like the idea behind the packs. Yeah, it, it makes sense. It's just far less like satisfying actually ripping them open. <laughs> a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I'm actually going to fly in a day early and just draft all day Friday. Nice. I'm just going to show up. I, I, I don't know if you have any pull, Luis. There should be a vintage tournament on Friday. I be... didn't. I was not in charge of making any of the side event schedules. Had I noticed there was going to be one on Saturday and not Friday, I would have lobbied to change that because <laughs> then I could have played in it. But uh, unfortunately, that... That, that I think is at this point, there's basically no deviations from the schedule given how much stuff is going on. Like, it's just yeah. impossible to change things. Of course. Did, did you actually finish signing your tokens, though? I see people in the chat that want to know. Uh, yeah, so I actually sent all my tokens out last Wednesday. I signed, I my best guess is 10,700 just because having some extras wouldn't hurt. And I, they needed them because the trucks were leaving from San Jose to go to Vegas on, like, Friday. So they wanted, they, they wanted them by then so they could then make packs with them. So I, I've been done for over a week, though. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess I've recovered by now. <laughs> Just such an awesome week for Magic. I am yeah. I'm looking forward to the weekend in Las Vegas. I'm looking forward to tonight. I think it's, it's kind of cool to uh, try out Modern and see what you guys come up with. Josh, I'm glad you didn't disappoint us. Definitely yeah. expected a brew from you, and you seem to have risen to the challenge. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to see what a preview of like a modern Super League would look like. You know, this is like a one-week snapshot, and I don't know. I mean, Super Leagues are awesome. I, I, I don't think there's a, a format you can announce of a Super League that I wouldn't be like, yeah, I, I would watch that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm excited that we got a chance to like mix it up and play modern. I think. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty excited about that. Awesome. Well, Josh, we're gonna we're gonna let you go get ready for your match. You are in the first feature match. It'll be you against Paul. Uh, we can actually throw the bracket up and let everybody know if, if you haven't seen the bracket for this week. We can take a look at it while Josh goes to get ready for his match. So yeah, Josh versus Paul will be the round one feature match. Meanwhile, we are going to be holding the match. Uh, where did we decide to hold? We're holding Brian and Tom, right? Uh, we're holding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Brian, Brian and Tom. Tom. So. It's funny, we're actually getting to the point in the season where you, you look at like, hey, is this person close enough to lock that everyone would rather they suck up the extra points and make it so other people, you know, don't get them? Hmm. So like a Paul Owen finals is actually not that bad for the other people in the league in terms of making the top three in the sense that Paul and Owen are getting to the point where they have they have enough of the total points given out so far. I mean, it's still close. We still have many weeks left, but it is yeah, kind of interesting when that standing. dynamic starts. If you look at the standings, I feel like it's Owen and then a cluster of four and then the yeah. bottom. Owen, Owen is significantly higher than Paul so at, at this point. So basically, people are rooting for themselves. And if they lose, they're rooting for Owen because yeah. you, you don't want the people next to you doing well. You want people who are way ahead of you or way behind you. Yeah, I know that Brad was feeling, you know, I saw him on Twitter complaining. Oh, he feels so out of it. But 35 points available for winning a week. All of a sudden, 10 goes to 45. And I feel like any of the, the guys on the bottom right now are right back in the thick of things if they win a week. Yeah, that, that is very true. It, it, we're still we're still pretty close together despite the point totals looking big. There are, you know, 35 points for a win up, up at play. And, you you know, Paul could get zero points and then almost any of the other people could, could catch him just, by, just with this week. Definitely. It's going to be interesting. So we're, this is week five. There's three weeks left after this, and we will return to standard after this week for the home stretch. Uh, top three make the playoffs. Uh, the number one seed is nice. I mean, Owen would certainly like to hold on to first place because then he gets a buy straight into the finals. Second will play third in the first round of our playoffs after that cut to the top three. 
Right. And, and we've mentioned this before, but uh, the playoff format's pretty cool. It's unified standard. These guys have to bring three different standard decks to the table for the playoffs, and they have to follow unified constructed. So only four copies of any given card between the three decks. Yeah, you can't play Obs on aggro and Obs on mid range, but you can play like you know mono red aggro and Esper dragon certainly don't overlap in any way. And then you could play like mono red Esper and Obs on is close. It depends on how, where you put your heroes, downfalls, and bio blights. So th there are you know a lot of interesting things when it comes to unified. I was actually a, a PTQ season where me and Paul Chion and a, a friend of ours, Brent, won a PTQ, and it was unified standard. And building those three decks was very interesting. Yeah, definitely a fun format. I think we are, sounds like they're good to go. Let's get down to our match. Josh Utter late.